Hello everyone, Golden Nova here, and so, as it was promised, so it shall be delivered. Upon the 10,000th subscription, the pact was sealed, and so I ventured forth, cataloging all there was to know about one of the greatest Xyz archetypes ever known. Its members have seen play in a variety of decks, spanning years of competitive play, and now, we're going to begin the process of crafting the definitive compendium of their entire lineage. At least until we get another wave of support. Knowing me, it's bound to happen. But first, let's get acquainted with the character they're tied to. Yuma Tsukumo is the Yu-Gi-Oh! protagonist that is in possession of the most chaotic gremlin energy out of all of them, and that's including the one that's possessed by an actual chaotic gremlin. But it's all balanced out by another companion spirit, Astral. They're an ethereal entity from Astral World who joins up with Yuma on a quest to restore their lost memories by collecting the number monsters. And while we may one day bring our focus to bear on the wide swath of number cards, for now we're going to be focusing, mostly, on just one. Number 39, Utopia. Well, in a bit. I'd be remiss if I didn't take this opportunity to talk about the cards that were instrumental in setting up Utopia in the anime. And while they're pretty splashable, it would feel pretty wrong to leave them out. Because Utopia isn't the only monster that Yuma is known for, he also wielded the Gagagas, as well as the whole Onomat pantheon. And what the heck is an Onomat? Well, it's short for Onomatopoeia, an umbrella term for words meant to emulate sounds, which you see in a lot of comics. You know, your bangs, your zooms, your kachows, and they're used to similar effect in manga. If you've seen basically any JoJo panel, you know what I'm talking about. And all the major themes used by Yuma are their own distinct archetype, but are tied together by on onomat cards that reference all of them. Gagaga, -ga -ga, Go Go Go, Dodo -do, -do, and Zubaba are all Japanese onomatopoeia. Which makes sense, I know this is something a young me would really love, so it's only natural that Yuma would too. And so, that's where we're gonna start. Get ready for some vocal warm-ups, practice your tongue twisters, and grab your favorite Xyz monster, because it's time to sound off with Onomats. But before we continue, a quick reminder to please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed my content so far. We're on the road to 100,000 subscribers, and what better way to travel down the road than on your Duel Runner? We'll be covering iconic 5D's characters along the way, and our next stop is 20K, where we'll start the You Say Explained series, covering Stardust, junk, and whatever other cards we can play to help us rev it up! We've also got our Discord, where we discuss that GX should have been named GN for Generation Next, and then I'd be able to milk the acronym for all it's worth, and a Twitter, where you can stay up to date on channel news and my bad takes. And if you really like what I do here, please consider joining my YouTube membership, it's basically like a Twitch sub, emotes included, or backing me on Patreon, where you can vote on a video that I make every month. It also gets you early access to my videos via the patron-only section of my Discord, provided I get the video done ahead of schedule. And whether you're a member or a patron, I get a schedule sent to you on the first week of the month, so you know what to expect for the next four weeks. Thank you all so much for watching, and now, back to the video. So, what's the deal with Onomats? Well, by and large, we've got a lot of effects that throw monsters onto the board, as well as level modulation to make sure they fit with one another for Xyz summons. However, we've also got a lot of other effects, because some of them have to stand on their own merits. So we'll go through each theme to make sure they all get the spotlight, including a very small one that's left out of other Onomat effects, the Achachas, a sound effect for something burning. Achacha Archer is a level 3 Fire Warrior monster with 1200 attack and 600 defense, and when normal or flip summoned, you inflict 500 points of damage to your opponent. This pairs nicely with Achacha Chanbara, who is also a level 3 Fire Warrior monster, sporting 1400 attack and 400 defense. During either player's turn, when a card or effect is activated that'll inflict damage when it resolves, you can special summon Chanbara from your hand, and if you do, inflict 400 points of damage to your opponent. So you get to deal a total of 900 points of damage and summon two level 3 monsters? This sounds... a lot like Barbar. -Bar. Did I accidentally write Burning Abyss Explained? I'm also throwing Chachaka Archer in here as well. They're a level 6 Wind Warrior monster with 1200 attack and 1800 defense, and once per turn they can target a spell or trap on the field and destroy it. They're entirely removed from the whole burning aesthetic, which I suppose is why it's Chachaka and not Achacha, but they sound similar enough, okay? Besides, what better way exists to get spell and trap removal onto the board through the effect of Flying Kamikari number 1? Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, let's get to the good stuff. It's time for Gagagaz. It's an onomatopoeia for physical impacts, kinda like POW, which is reflected in the anime by their monsters predominantly throwing hands at their opponent. Remember, that means this kid is an accomplished martial artist, so don't mess with him. Let's start with the most iconic, Gagaga Magician. 
They're a level 4 dark spellcaster monster with 1500 attack and 1000 defense. You can only control one of them, and once per turn, you can declare a level from 1 to 8, and Gagaga -ga -ga Magician's level matches what you declared until the end of the turn. However, it cannot be used as synchro material ever, so no 5D's shenanigans. We are trying to promote a new summoning mechanic after all. Magician would set the tone for the rest of the theme to come, and grants you access to a wide variety of generic Xyz monsters, making them an asset to any deck that struggles to mobilize the right levels. It also sets the trend of Gagagas having the most fantastic drip. Look at this nerd, it's like if Kakashi was cosplaying as Dark Magician, I love it. And the Dark Magician comparison wouldn't be complete without Gagaga -ga -ga Girl, a level 3 dark spellcaster monster with a thousand attack and 800 defense, and they can target a Gagaga -ga -ga magician you control to have girl match their level. And on top of that, any Xyz monster that uses only girl and other Gagaga -ga -ga monsters gains an effect where, when Xyz summoned, you can target a special summoned monster your opponent controls and its attack permanently becomes zero. So yeah, on top of anything else the Xyz monster you make does, it also blanks an opponent's monster's attack, an especially devastating move against Link monsters. It's a shame it doesn't also special summon itself if you control Gagaga -ga -ga Magician, but we've got other cards that can handle that for us. What's really on my mind right now is how much cell phone envy I have. Really wishing I could still put cool little charms on my phone. Now, if you are looking for a monster that won't take up your normal summon, Gagaga -ga -ga Clerk fills that role. They're a level 2 Earth Warrior monster with 400 attack and 800 defense, and if you control a Gagaga -ga -ga monster other than Clerk, you can special summon them from your hand. And if you want one that also modulates its level, you've got Gagaga -ga -ga Child. They're a level 2 Dark Spellcaster monster with 800 attack and 1200 defense, and if you control a Gagaga -ga -ga monster besides Child, you can special summon them from your hand. And when you do, you can target a Gagaga -ga -ga you control with a different level than Child and have Child match it, though you cannot conduct your battle phase the turn you activate that effect. It does suck that you have to lose out on your battle phase, especially if what you are looking to exceed summon is battle focused, so it's kind of a desperation play. Clerk can be used if you have access to other effects that will modulate their level, while Child is here if you need to be a bit more self-sufficient. Now, I don't know how a kid like this made it into My Gaga Academia, but I'm gonna chalk it up to a clerical error. And as long as we're talking about the lower leveled ones, let's go over Gaga -ga -ga Sister. They're a level 2 dark spellcaster monster with 200 attack and 800 defense, and when normal summoned, you can add a Gaga -ga -ga spell or trap from your deck to your hand, which is amazing because some of the spells and trap support we have access to is bonkers. You can also have them target another Gaga -ga -ga monster you control, and the levels of Sister and the targeted monster each become equal to their combined levels. So if you target a Gaga -ga -ga magician that has not activated its effect yet, both Sister and magician become level 6. And that's important, because the highest level Magician can go by themselves is 8. So Sister opens up rank 9s and 10s. Imagine it, you can get their levels so high you can make Gustav Max. Annika Boom would be so proud. For more level modulation, let's take a look at Gaga -ga -ga Caesar. They're a level 3 Earth Warrior monster with 1800 attack and 600 defense, and cannot attack unless you control another face-up Gaga -ga -ga monster. And they also can't be used as synchro material. Once per turn, they can banish any monster from your grave to have all Gaga -ga -gas you control become the level of the banished monster until the end of the turn. And thankfully, they impose zero restrictions on what you can summon. Natively, you have levels 2, 3, and 4, and you can splash in higher level monsters if you want to dabble in the deeper end of the Xyz pool. And if you want to be extra spicy, you can add it to another deck that likes having its monsters banished, like Shiranui or Metaphys. It's really helpful for keeping your team on the same level. Gagaga -ga -ga Mancer is a level 4 dark spellcaster monster with 100 attack and defense. Once per turn, you can target a Gagaga -ga -ga monster in your grave and special summon it, but you're locked into only special summoning Gagaga -ga -ga monsters for the rest of the turn. Kind of feels like it defeats the purpose of them being an Xyz toolbox, but whatever. Also, if detached from an Xyz monster as material to activate that monster's effect, you can target any face-up Xyz monster you control, and it gains 500 attack until the end of the turn. The summon restriction really blows, but the kinds of Gagaga -ga -ga monsters you can make with them do benefit from the attack gain effect. For instance, it makes Gagaga -ga -ga Samurai's double attack even more potent, and while Gagaga -ga -ga Cowboy is mostly known for cleaning up games in defense position, they do have a pretty strong attack buff and debuff effect that a spare 500 attack does wonders for. But you're not fooling anyone with that cheeky name. You bring Gagagas -ga -ga back from the grave, that's 100% some necromancer behavior right there, I'm calling the paladins. Gagagas. Gaga Gardener. <laughs> 
Gaga Ga Gardna is a level 4 Earth Warrior monster with 1500 attack and 2000 defense. When an opponent's monster declares a direct attack, you can special summon Gardna from your hand, and when targeted for an attack, you can discard a card to keep Gardna from being destroyed by that battle. At first, this seems like a really out of left field type of effect considering what we've talked about, but it does help put a body on board that you can pair with another Gaga Ga when it rolls back around to your turn, and does a pretty impressive job of keeping you safe in the meantime. Though whenever the eventual Gardna archetype shows up, I'm not sure they're going to be much help. Gagaga -ga -ga Head is the biggest Gagaga -ga -ga we've seen thus far, and they're a level 6 dark spellcaster monster with 2100 attack and defense. But if your opponent controls monsters and you control no monsters, you can normal summon Head without tributing as a level 4 monster. And when normal summoned, you can target up to two Gagaga -ga -ga monsters in your grave, except other copies of itself, and special summon them, but you can't special summon monsters for the rest of the turn, except via an Xyz summon using only Gagaga -ga -ga monsters as material. And an Xyz monster using Head while it's on the field as Xyz material gains an effect where you draw a card when it succeeds summoned. This card pairs extremely well with Caesar, as they can bring all the different levels you summon into line, and Gagaga -ga -ga Girl can add to the draw you get by making one of your opponent's monsters easy pickings. And while you can only make that one Xyz monster that turn, you have access to any generic that you can modulate the levels for. You can even get some of those nutty ones that require 3 material. They're really good at putting together a big play, which is why they make for the best head of operations. Alright, let's go over those extra deck monsters. Gagaga -ga -ga Samurai is a rank 4 Earth Warrior Xyz monster with 1900 attack and 1600 defense, requiring any two level 4 monsters. Once per turn, they can detach a material to target a Gagaga -ga -ga monster you control, and it can make a second attack during each battle phase that turn. Also, when another monster you control is targeted for an attack while Samurai is in attack position, you can change Samurai to defense position, and if you do, change the attack target to Samurai and proceed to damage calculation. Not a bad level 4 if I'm being honest, they can potentially put out 3800 points of damage, 4800 if you detach Mancer from them, then can draw away attacks from other monsters while preventing battle damage. It makes sense why this doesn't see a lot of play, these kinds of effects aren't exactly going to be tearing up the battlefield, but it's great on both the offense and defense meaning this dual wielder serves dual purposes in your duels. Gagaga -ga -ga Cowboy is a rank 4 Earth Warrior Xyz monster with 1500 attack and 2400 defense, requiring any two level 4 monsters as material. Once per turn, you can detach a material to apply an effect based on what position Cowboy is in. Very Morphtronic of you. If they're in attack position, you can detach a material to have Cowboy gain 1000 attack and make the monster they're battling lose 500 attack for a total net change of 1500, and if they're in defense position, you can detach a material to win the game. Okay, technically it burns your opponent for 800, but the way it's used normally might as well win you the game. While the attack position effect can be helpful in clearing out some big monsters, the lack of restrictions on it meant you could leave that big offensive push to your other monsters, and any amount of remaining life points at or below 800 meant victory was a single overlay away. In fact, it was so prolific that some underhanded duelists who weren't even running cowboy in their lists just had to say they were going to make cowboy to get their opponent to concede. This old cowpoke hasn't seen much play in a while, mostly due to the fact that extra decks are more cramped than ever, but has nonetheless left its mark on the game for for some time to come, and any beatdown deck that can lean into the rank 4 toolbox always has this trusty iron at their side. Which does seem thematically inappropriate. You'd think considering the Wild West theme, it'd bring the game to a draw. Gagaga -ga, -ga, ga Magician, the extra ga is very important, is a rank 4 dark spellcaster Xyz monster with 2000 attack and defense. They can detach a material to target an Xyz monster in your grave and special summon it, but its effects are negated. Not an issue though, as it's mainly used to facilitate its second effect. When it's an Xyz material on a utopic future monster, that Xyz monster gains an effect where, during the main phase, you can detach two material to target an Xyz monster you control, and until the end of the turn, negate its effects while changing its attack to 4000. Now, one might ask how you use an Xyz monster as material without a rank up magic spell, since they have no levels. It flies in the face of every rule ever printed on the subject. But utopic future monsters specifically require Xyz monsters of the same rank, except number monsters. So it's rather helpful that Gaga -ga -ga, Ga Ga Magician is an Xyz monster that can summon another rank 4 to help out with your future plays. Alright. Now it's time for our spells and traps. Gaga -ga -ga Academy Emergency Network is a normal spell that you can only activate if your opponent controls monsters and you control none. You special summon a Gaga -ga -ga from your deck, but you can't special summon any other monsters that turn except through Xyz summoning. That's a... 
gosh, this card goes off the rails really quickly. Without the ability to special summon your main deck monsters, you're down to your only normal summon to get the material ready for that Xyz summon. Like, if it locked you into only summoning Xyz monsters from the extra deck, this wouldn't be half bad. But, for now, it seems like the only thing this card is good for is setting up the My Hero Academia reference earlier in the video. Gagaga -ga -ga Bolt is a normal spell you can activate if you control a Gagaga -ga -ga monster, and it targets a card on the field and destroys it. Uh, good old one for one removal. It really helped the deck be the powerhouse it is in Duel Links. Not only did you have access to a strong double attacker and temporary monster removal, you have the ability to grab a flexible problem solver, either through drawing or searching it with Gagaga -ga -ga Sister, a move that can really energize your game plan. Gagaga -ga -ga Draw is a normal spell that has you banishing three Gagaga -ga -ga monsters from your grave to draw two cards. Great addition if you're playing pure Gagaga's, -ga -ga but not going to be much help if you're splashing them into another deck. I mean, maybe if we get to a point where Gagaga -ga -ga extra deck monsters become more extenders into other Gagagas -ga -ga for play sequences, I might change my tune. And I know, Pot of Greed is an outstanding card, but until we see some more advancement from the theme, we're gonna have to draw a line here. Gagaga -ga -ga Tag gives all the Gagagas -ga -ga you currently control a 500 attack boost for each Gagaga -ga -ga monster you currently control until your next standby phase. That seems a bit at odds with the Xyz focus. We end up losing quite a few monsters by stacking them on top of each other, but it's nice that we have the option. We do have quite a few effects that summon out free Gagagas -ga -ga for the material, so being able to switch to aggro if your opponent tries to artifact scythe you is a pretty funny maneuver. And if you can manage to get, say, Samurai onto the board as well as multiple Gagagas, -ga -ga then your double attacker just got swole. So now it all makes sense. This card is all the Gagagas -ga -ga doing one of those Twitter challenge things where you tag people, getting stronger the more people you rope in. Dang, this school's pretty social media savvy. Gagaga -ga -ga Wind is a normal spell that special summons a Gagaga -ga -ga monster from your hand as a level 4 monster. Now, most of our good ones already are level 4, but as the card art shows, this is useful for modulating the levels of monsters that don't do a good job of it on their own. Girl can only match Magician by themselves, but if you have Mancer or Gardna on the board, they're pretty much stuck. It can also get Head out of your hand if it's stuck otherwise, and while Clerk has little trouble special summoning themselves, doing so while making their level match someone else's is a huge assist. It's a minus one, sure, but it's also really helpful in setting up for a big play. Gagaga -ga -ga Back is a quick play spell that you can activate the turn a Gagaga -ga -ga monster you control was destroyed by battle and sent to the grave. On resolution, you special summon as many monsters as possible that were destroyed by battle this turn in face-up defense position, then take 600 points of damage for each monster special summoned this way. It's a very, very specific soul charge, but does cost you a lot less, though having to be destroyed by battle is its own kind of additional cost. Most attacks are spent attacking directly, and while you can thankfully force this by using Gagaga -ga -ga Samurai's attack redirection effect, your opponent is more likely to use effect removal on your monsters so you don't inadvertently make a comeback. Gagaga -ga -ga Revenge is an equip card that targets a Gagaga -ga -ga monster in your grave, special summons it, then gets equipped to that monster. If Revenge leaves the field, so does the equipped monster. And if Revenge is sent to the grave because the equipped monster was used as Xyz material, all Xyz monsters you currently control gain 300 attack. This is just a really outstanding card, but I guess when you reprint Premature Burial, that goes without saying. It doesn't negate any of the monster's effects either, so your Magician can modulate, Girl can match Magician, and Caesar can set up your entire field, all while giving a little extra boost to the monster you make on top of it. And it does not fall short in the style department either, as it has the monster you summon erupting from a coffin. That's not a Yu-Gi-Oh effect, that's a pro wrestling intro. Gagaga -ga -ga Guard is a normal trap you can activate if you control two or more face-up Gagaga -ga -ga monsters, and for the rest of the turn, all monsters you currently control can't be destroyed by battle or card effect. This is another card that rewards you for going wide with Gagagas -ga -ga instead of investing into a single monster. And while I'd usually advise against leaving what amounts to a bunch of vanillas on the board, sometimes you just need to keep your stuff safe if you're locked out of making certain plays. On top of your opponent stunning you with something, it can also be useful for keeping your stuff on board to wait out any restriction you might have put yourself under. For instance, Mancer sets up all the monsters you need to activate this card, but if you want to use them to make anything other than a Gagaga, -ga -ga, then this card makes for a pretty good guard. Gagaga -ga -ga Rush is a normal trap you can activate when any number of face-up Gagaga -ga -ga monsters you control are targeted by an opponent's monster effect. You negate the effect, destroy the monster that targeted your Gagaga, -ga -ga, then burn your opponent for damage equal to the destroyed monster's attack or defense, whichever is higher. Holy smokes! I mean, it doesn't really hold a candle to Gravedigger's trap hole, but as far as negation that punishes your opponent goes, this is a close second. It's searchable with Sister and keeps your combo pieces from being interacted with. Well... 
at least from targeted monster effects. It's not gonna do much against activation negation. It also kind of blows that, aside from Samurai, there really isn't a Gagaga -ga -ga boss monster you can back up with this card. Most of the generic Xyz you want to flex into with this won't get any protection from it. And unfortunately, if Gaga Gaga -ga -ga Magician is any indication, they really aren't in a rush to print one anytime soon. Gagaga -ga -ga Shield is a normal trap that targets a spellcaster you control, becomes equipped to them, and twice per turn, that monster cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects. This is a nifty little card that grants some durability to your monsters while providing some niche applications. For instance, you can equip this to Maiden with Eyes of Blue, triggering their effect to summon a Blue Eyes, and now it's that much harder for your opponent to get rid of them. But I have some umbrage with this, because while it's a Gagaga -ga -ga card, it doesn't even work with half the Gagagas -ga -ga you have. We've got almost as many warriors as spellcasters. I guess it just goes to show where the school likes to put all of its funding. Next we have our Go-Go-Go's. They're a series of mostly level 4 earth attribute rock monsters, we'll get to the exceptions in a bit, and their onomatopoeia is associated with a menacing kind of rumble. If you've ever played a game and things start to shake or get really tense before the bad thing happens, it's kind of like that. Go-Go-Go Golem has 1800 attack and 1500 defense, and once per turn while in defense position, they cannot be destroyed by battle. So it's got a bit of bulk if it's forced to play defensively, and otherwise has some really solid stats. But without any kind of effect to help throw them out onto the field, they feel more like they're standing around than Go-Go-Go going. Go 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 Gorum has 2300 attack and zero defense, and if summoned, its battle position is changed. Also, if they're destroyed on the field and sent to the grave, you have to send a Go 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 monster from your deck to the grave. That's a large boy, so it makes sense they would force it to defense position if you normal summon them. And if they're destroyed, then at least you can set up some of your other Go Go Go's that use the grave. Also, I don't know what it is, but Gorum just looks like a meme image. Like, here, take a look. Go 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 Giant has 2000 attack and 0 defense, and when normal summoned, you can target a Go 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 monster in your grave and special summon it in defense position, then change Giant to defense position. Also, if Giant attacks, it goes full goblin attack force and is changed to defense position at the end of the battle phase. This is a pretty great way to summon back Gorum, as it'll just change to attack position after it's been summoned. So you can either go on the offensive with a 2300 attack monster, or overlay for a rank 4. I hear Gallant Granite is pretty good for rock themes. It might have to take Take things easy after it attacks, but it's like they always say, the best defense is a good giant throwing 2000 attack at your opponent before it gets tired. Go 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 Gigas has 0 attack and 2200 defense, and while they're in the grave and you special summon a Go 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 monster, you can special summon Gigas from your grave, but you can't conduct your battle phase the turn you activate that effect. It might be a bit overkill considering the drawback, we already have a fair number of effects to build up our Go 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 garrison, but if you can trigger this on your opponent's turn, then you've got a pretty sweet blocker with no downside. But make sure not to overwork it, the Gigas economy is rough enough as it is. Go 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 Ghost is a dark zombie monster with 1900 attack and 0 defense, and if special summoned, you can target specifically a Go 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 Golem in your grave, special summon it, then change Ghost to defense position. This forms a pretty neat chain where you can summon Ghost with Giant, which can then summon Golem for 3 material. Toss in a Gigas for 4 material, and now you've got 2 rank 4s at your disposal. With that much advantage, your opponent won't stand a Ghost! Go 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 Golem Golden Form is my favorite card in the lineup, and I'll leave that to you to figure out why. They sport a question mark attack and 1500 defense, they can't be normal summoned or set, and must be special summoned from your hand by tributing any Go 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 monster. Their attack becomes double the attack of the monster you tributed, any battle damage they inflict to your opponent is halved, which is fair, and once per turn during either player's turn, if any monster effect is activated on your opponent's field, Golden Form here loses exactly 1500 attack, and if it does, the effect is negated. So it's like a very watered down light and darkness dragon. You won't be stopping any hand traps or grave effects, but the upside is that this card can get huge. Even on the smaller end, tributing Golem gets you to 3600, and Gorum gets you to a whopping 46. It can also help with your damage output by tributing something like a giant after its summon effect has been used. Sure, the damage it deals is halved, but it's better than having a monster in defense position that can't help with that. Now, instead of chilling for the turn, Golden Form takes their place as an obelisk that can insulate your board against negation bodies like Boral Sword or Dragoon. Just the kind of performance I'd expect from another member of the Golden Gallery.
Go Go Go, Aristera, and Dexia have 0 attack and 2200 defense. And while another Go 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 monster is on the field, your opponent cannot target Go 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 monsters for attacks, and they can't be targeted by your opponent's card effects while on the field. And any Xyz monster that uses only A and D and other Go 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 monsters gains an effect where, when Xyz summoned, you target an opponent's monster, change it to defense position, and if you do, its defense becomes 0. So it's kind of like Gaga Ga Girl, giving you a big bonus for only using monsters on your theme. But this one is a tad less deadly. Unless you make a monster with piercing, then you're in the clear. Un unless your opponent only has link monsters. But that's becoming less and less of a concern as time goes on, and honestly, the on-field effect that prevents attack and effect targeting is too good to pass up. Limit your opponent's options with this, and they'll play right into the palm of your hands. They've also got a single extra deck monster, number 55, Go 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 Goliath. They're a rank 4 Earth Rock Xyz monster with 2400 attack and 1200 defense, requiring any two level 4 monsters as material. They grant all your monsters an 800 defense boost, and you can detach a material to target a level 4 Earth Rock monster in your grave and add it to your hand. Excellent for recouping material for future plays, but what I like best is the ability to get back Golden Form, at which point you contribute Goliath to make a 4800 attack monster. The 800 defense boost would be nice, but we've either got big walls already like Gigas, or absolute novice defenders like Ghost and Giant, so 800 isn't going to make much of a difference. So you might as well take the opportunity to go from David to Goliath in no time flat. Our last Go 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 card is Go 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 Talisman, a continuous spell that keeps you from taking any effect damage while you control two or more Go 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 monsters. Also, once per turn, when an attack is declared involving a Go 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 monster you control, you can activate Talisman to keep your monster from being destroyed by battle. And that's actually really clutch considering all the zero defense monsters we're going to be holding onto. Ideally, you'd have turned those monsters into a more impactful Xyz one by that time, but sometimes you've got a golden form that's used its negation effect one too many times and just needs to survive one more battle phase before they can be turned into a new monster. And hey, any card that can keep your rocks from getting smashed by a neutron blast attack is undisputably a really lucky charm. Our next stop is with the Dododos, a group of mostly Earth Warrior monsters, and their onomatopoeia is associated with the sound of heavy footfalls in quick succession, which is very well reflected in their monsters. They're hefty, they're armored, and they want to make some noise. Dododo Bot is a level 4 monster and our only machine type, wielding 1800 attack and 1900 defense. They can't be normal summoned, but they can be normal set, and if they attack, they're unaffected by any other card's effects until the end of the damage step. Ah, the classic sword and board setup. I suppose it's helpful if you think you're going to attack into something like a mirror force, but because it's got a bit of a cooldown built in because of the normal setting, it takes a bit too long to reap the benefits. Besides, I thought we were trying to get bots out of games, not in them. Dododo Warrior is a level 6 monster with 2300 attack and 900 defense. You can normal summon them without tributing, but its attack becomes 1800. Also, if they attack, they negate all card effects that activate in your opponent's grave until the end of the damage step. It's some... neat coverage. Not only will it stop any effect of the monster you destroy from triggering in the grave, but will also stop other cards that would trigger in the grave in response. But it's hardly an armades. Spells and traps are still open, as well as any effect the monster might have to retaliate with. But despite all that, it's still one of the few level 6 monsters you can just normal summon with little restriction. So if rank 6s are on the table, it'll be pretty hard to axe this card from your list. Dododo Buster is a level 6 monster with 1900 attack and 800 defense, and if only your opponent controls monsters, you can special summon them from your hand, and if you do, they become level 4. But when they're tribute summoned, you can target a Dododo monster in your grave and special summon it in defense position. So you can summon it for free as a level 4 monster, or convert one of your current monsters into a level 6 via tribute summoning, which can then revive Warrior to make those rank 6s. But those are some very specific scenarios. If you don't have the right setup for them, they are kind of a bust. Dododo Driver is a level 4 monster with 1800 attack and 200 defense, and up to twice per turn, if Driver was special summoned that turn by the effect of a Dododo monster, you can target a Dododo monster you control and either increase or decrease their level by 1. This makes it the premier option to summon off of Buster's effect for the sheer range of options it provides. You can either bring down Buster's level by 2 to make a rank 4, raise Driver's level by 2 to make a rank 6, or lower Buster by 1 and raise Driver by 1 to make a rank 5. Driver is integral for smoothing out your levels, making them a driving force in the theme's game plan. 
Dododo Witch is a level 4 monster with 1200 attack and 1600 defense, and when normal or special summoned, you can special summon a Dododo monster from your hand in attack position or face down defense position, except another copy of itself. This is another great card to pair with Driver, as special summoning them with this effect means you can go into a rank 4, increase both their levels by 1 to go into a rank 5, or lower both their levels by 1 to make a rank 3. It can also special summon Dododo Bot in attack mode so you don't have to wait to attack with it, or get Warrior out so you can benefit from all all the attack power. They have a lot of applications, so they'll be very helpful whichever way you use them. Dododo Swordsman is a level 8 monster with 0 attack and 3000 defense, and while Swordsman is on the field after having been flip summoned, it gains 3500 attack, and when flipped face up by any means, you can target up to 2 face up monsters on the field and destroy them. This is why it's so important for Witch to be able to summon in face down defense position, because they can set up this ridiculous ticking time bomb. If your opponent has effect removal, then it's not much different from any other face down monster. But failing those options, your opponent either has to attack into the 3000 defense wall to only have to deal with the monster destruction, or will have to wait for you to flip up Swordmaster, get the pops, and become a humongous chungus. But I... Guess it was too much to make it a flip monster, huh? You know, why did Konami even bother printing monsters that have effects when they flip if they aren't going to make them flip monsters? Our last Dododo card is Dododo Draw. It's a normal spell that has you sending a Dododo monster from your hand or face up on the field to the grave to draw two cards. It's a destiny draw that's thankfully very helpful for setting up Driver. Throw it into the grave to search for more extenders and enablers, then get Buster Tribute summoned and you're off to the races. Like its counterpart Gagaga -ga -ga Draw, it's unfortunately not very good, as the number of printed Dododos is very small, to say nothing of the playable ones, but you need to find happiness in the small things sometimes. For instance, if these are all regular sized cards, then the Dododos are little gnome people! Ain't that precious? Next we have the Zubabas, a group of Earth Warrior monsters, and my research has led me to believe that this one is actually a combination of two onomatopoeias. All the previous themes have the same three characters in repetition, but from what I can tell, Zubaba is the combination of Zuzaza, a large swoosh sound like a hurricane, and Bababa, which is swift machinery at work like helicopter blades. So I feel like the combo is meant to evoke someone swinging weapons around very fast. First we have Zubaba Knight, a level 3 monster with 1600 attack and 900 defense. At the start of the damage step, if they attack a face-up defense position monster, you destroy it. Neat. I suppose this would have been pretty sweet with Go Go Go, Aristera, and Dexia's effect if it didn't already put the monster's defense stat to zero, but that just means it combos well with any other position change effect. You know, one of the most relevant types of effects across all levels of play. Okay, we are kind of scratching the bottom of the barrel here, but the next one's probably where things pick up. Zubaba Buster is a level 3 monster with 1800 attack and 600 defense, and if they inflict battle damage to your opponent at the end of the damage step, you have to destroy the face-up monster on the field with the lowest attack, your choice of tide, and if it does, Buster loses 800 attack. So it's a monster with fissure encoded onto it, but it doesn't limit the destruction to your opponent, meaning you can end up blowing up your own card, which gets more likely the more you do it since it loses attack whenever you trigger the effect. Okay, this is getting a bit out of hand, there's gotta be a good Zubaba out there somewhere. Zubaba General is a rank 4- RANK 4?! The other two are level 3s with no level modulation, what's going on here?! Uh, it's got 2,000 attack and 1,000 defense, uses any two level 4 monsters, still not over this, and once per turn you can detach a material to equip one warrior monster from your hand to general as an equipped card, and gains attack equal to the combined attack of all monsters equipped to them by that effect. That's... Kind of cool, actually. It's certainly more resource intensive than, say, Heroic Champion Excalibur, but that monster has a much shorter shelf life, whereas General's boost lasts as long as they're equipped. Though you will have to play pure warriors to make the most of it, since you can't just equip something like an Esol the same way Borolode Savage can. Now get back out there and train those troops, General. You need to get your subordinates into a shape where they can actually summon you. Thankfully, all is not lost, as we have a few cards that act as bridges between the themes. And the first one I want to talk about is the first legitimately playable Zubaba main deck monster, Zubaba Bancho Gagaga Coat. They're a level 4 Earth Warrior monster with 1800 attack and 100 defense, and if you control a Zubaba or Gagaga monster, aside from another copy of itself, you can special summon them from your hand. They can target a Gogogo -Go -Go or Dododo monster in your grave and special summon it, but you are locked out of special summoning any monsters from the extra deck for the rest of the turn, except Sees monsters. Now the first part of the name might seem like a bunch of gibberish, but again, if you've seen some JoJo, the visual design here might look familiar. That's because Boncho is a term that describes the leader of a gang of delinquents in a particularly Japanese style. 
The open jacket and distinctive hat are both big indicators, so if you've seen characters like Jotaro, Mondo Awada, either of the Boncho Digimon, or countless others, you can see how the weird Zubaba Boncho fusion name kinda works, especially along with the vague school theming of the Gaga Gaz. As an actual monster, it's also pretty good. Its synergy with Zubabas is largely non-existent, but it's a free summon of a Gaga Ga for your Xyz plays, and can extend your plays by summoning out any Dododos or Gogogos you're splashing in. It doesn't even limit you that much, because this restriction is much more lenient than previous Gagagas, especially since we're no longer reliant on links to make room for your Xyz. It's certainly the baddest Boncho on campus, but like any good leader, they look after their own. Unless you mess with the coat, then all bets are off. Dododo Dwarf Go 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 Glove is a level 4 Earth Rock monster with 0 attack and 1800 defense. During your main phase, they can special summon a Zubaba or Gagaga Ga Ga monster from your hand, and if you control a Go 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 or Dododo monster, except another copy of itself, you can special summon this card from your grave, but it's banished when it leaves the field. Which should hopefully never happen, because once you tuck them under an Xyz monster, they'll go right back to the grave so you can use their effect all over again. Dododo Dwarf Go 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 Glove is another excellent extender that helps you bridge the gaps between the different themes, and was so good in fact that it actually saw play in Ad Emancipator of all things as a way to add more rock monster extenders. How cool is that? It also helps explain why all the Dododos are so tiny. They're dwarves! I can't wait to bring the rich mythical history of the Dododos into my next D&D game. We've also got a normal trap, Guard Go, which triggers if any number of Gagaga, Ga, Go Go Go, or Dododo monsters you control are destroyed by Battler Card effect and sent to the grave. You target one of those monsters, special summon it, then you can special summon up to two Gagaga, Ga, Go Go Go, or Dododo monsters from your hand in defense position. So you've got a way to retaliate against your opponent by reviving a destroyed monster and summoning more from your hand, but there aren't many that can really take advantage of this. I guess some of the Go Go Go's can, Golem has that once per turn battle destruction immunity in defense position, and both Gigas and the Handy Hands have solid defense stats. But aside from that, you just gotta hope they can survive a battle phase, or that it triggers on your turn, for some reason. And like, where even is the guard part of all this? Like, I suppose throwing out monsters keeps your opponent away from your life points, but Gaga Ga Ga Guard does more to protect things than this. Konami, if you're going to print cards, I demand that they have the highest standard of ludonarrative resonance between the names and effects, especially with the theme made up of silly onomatopoeias. It's imperative to my immersion! Alright, now it's time for the crown jewel, the Onomat cards, the ones that tie everything together. And I've gotta start with Utopic Onomatopoeia, which is a big reason why I had to bring the Onomat themes into the Utopia video. They're a light warrior monster with 1500 attack and defense, are always treated as a Zubaba, Gagaga, Ga, Go Go Go, and Dododo card, which makes it the second ever playable main deck Zubaba card. During your main phase, you can special summon up to one each of a Zubaba, Gagaga, Ga, Go Go Go, and or Dododo monster from your hand in defense position, but you're locked out of your extra deck except for Xyz monsters for the rest of the turn. Once again, another brilliant card that helps connect the themes, throwing a bunch of them onto the field at once for some huge blowout plays. And you can even run it in the pure versions of any of those themes, as even summoning just one out of your hand can be enough to get the ball rolling. It's a big reason to play this in paper and in Duel Links, even if your deck name is going to end up sounding like Zoo, ba ba ga 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 ga, do 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 said the go go said some min the go go. Onomatopoeia is a normal spell that has you sending a card in your hand to the grave to add up to two Zubaba, Gagaga, Ga, Ga, Go Go Go, or Dododo monsters from your deck to your hand, but not more than one of each particular archetype. Back in the day, you had to try really hard to string together the synergies of the themes. Like, if you squinted hard enough, Gagaga Ga, Ga, Magician was a great pair with any of them due to their modular level, but with the advent of Zubaba Bancho, Gagaga Ga, Ga, Coat, and Dododo Dwarf, Go 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 Gloves, you can add both of them with this card, which makes connecting the themes that much easier easier and overall more powerful, and really helps when things go onomata pair shaped. Onomata Pickup is a continuous spell that, when activated, adds an Onomata card from your deck to your hand, except another copy of itself, which effectively makes it more copies of Onomata Para. Once per turn, you can target a Zubaba, Gagaga, Ga, Go Go Go, or Dododo monster you control, and all monsters you currently control become that monster's level until the end of the turn, even if Pickup leaves the field. Alright, now that's some powerful Xyz nonsense right there. Not only do you gain access to the power that is Onomata Para, you can also grab Utopic Onomata Pia if you're already Already set up, and if you land Gagaga Ga Ga Magician onto the board, then you've just modulated the level of your entire field, because after you use Magician's effect, you can use Pickup to make everyone copy it, no fuss, no muss. And that's just what strategies like Onomat need, a little pick-me-up. 
Our last card is Onomatopia, a field spell that gains a high five the sky counter each time a number of Utopia monsters are special summoned to your side of the field. All monsters you control gain 200 attack and defense for each high five the sky counter on it, and once per turn you can remove two high five the sky counters to special summon a Zubaba, Gagaga, -ga -ga, Go 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 or Dododo monster from your deck. This'll be a bit more relevant when we talk about Utopia, but it's nice that you have another card that acts as a way to pump up your board if you decide to go wide. And if you decide to go full Yuma, this is another way to extend your Utopia plays. Removing two counters can get you Zubaba Bancho, Gagaga -ga -ga Coat, which can get you a monster out of your grave to make another Xyz monster, meaning that the sky is quite literally the limit. So that's all the Onomot cards, but what do we do with them? Well anything, I would imagine. With the breadth of cards you have access to, I imagine you can come up with a play sequence that would rival your wildest dreams. But since we're limited by linear time and finite dimensions, here's something funky you can do with Onomots. Open a hand with either Onomata Pickup or Para, and one of either Utopic Onomot or Dododo Dwarf. Get to Para and pitch the Utopic or Dwarf, and grab the opposite one, as well as Zubaba Boncho. Then normal summon the Utopic or Dwarf, and use their effect to summon the Boncho. Utopic is preferred, since you can potentially summon more than one monster, but it's not needed for this example. Then you use Boncho's effect to summon whichever monster you discarded, and now you have all three on the field. Use Boncho and Dwarf to make a rank 4, in this example we'll make Tornado Dragon to clear a pesky back row, or Castell to answer a difficult monster. Make sure to detach Dwarf, because since Utopic is a Dododo monster, you can special summon Dwarf back from the grave. At this point, you can use your remaining monsters to form Utopia Double, and if you've cleared all interaction by this point, you probably just won the game. Alternatively, you can do all that, but make another problem solver as your second Xyz monster, then overlay them into F-Zero Utopic Future, all the way up into Utopic Draco Future. And that's all for part 1. Make sure to subscribe to catch part 2, where we cover all the Utopia cards proper, as well as all their support, from Zexel Sages to Zexel Weapons. In the meantime, I want to hear about all your favorite Onomot combos. There are so many permutations of these cards that I can never properly cover them all, so I want to hear what kind of surprises you can bring to the table with them. And if you're watching this at time of release, I'll be streaming myself playing this deck soon, and I'm going to need all the help I can get. I'd also like to take this time to thank my lovely patrons, including this month's illustrious Quasar Commander, CozyBoat275, Nebula Navigators, Benjamin Meisner, Billy Spence, Genesis Yu-Gi-Oh, Gloomba331, Panther J, Shep Shao Shep, The Wizard Moose, and The Fresh Prince of Conair, Cosmic Crusaders, Chaz Ghost, Colin Todd, George Schaefer, Hakatana, The Legendary Raven, and Panda PLS, as well as the wonderful Starlight Explorers you see on screen now. If you like what you saw and want to help fund the future of this channel, please consider joining as a YouTube member, it's basically like a Twitch sub, emotes included, or supporting me on Patreon, all of which come with some pretty sweet perks. And if you want to see the very first time I featured a number of these cards, check out this old Nova video where I talk about the Yuma cards found in the legendary duelist pack, Magical Hero. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye